What's up, everybody? This is Steve Mac 25 Today, I'm going to delve into a game review on Star Fox 64, one of the best games in the series, which was made back in 1997, but it was remade for the Nintendo 3DS in 2011. And this game, the difference between that and the original Star Fox is that it, it, it's more elaborate than the other game. And it, it, this is the intro of the, of the game. Planaria, Fourth Planet, the Wildlife System, the Evil Andros, Terminus, One Star, and the System to uh, Verse Land and Extinction. Yada, yada, yada. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let you read the, the, the intro. It will show that uh, how, how Lilac Wars really began. And uh, you can see that there's the narratives down on the bottom uh, section of the screen, and then the, the, the screen on the top. You see that's uh, that's that's an Arwen getting shot down by Andros's army as, as you read it, and you know the uh, Peppy escaping from Venom. You know, but based on what you follow up from the narrative, and then uh, it, it entails through each picture and each uh, cinematic scene. And then that's uh, James McCloud's son, Fox McCloud, taking up the, his father's uh, uh, foundation. And they're gonna repel the, uh, the invasion from Andros. And you see that's the whole Lilac system. Starting from Corneria, and you can make it all the way to Venom on the other side. That's what, that's what, the, that's what the game is all about. Okay, so that's the world map of the Lilac system. The far left for the underneath the green arrow, that's the planet Corneria, the home planet. I know this is like a, a, a somewhat of a reboot, but it's a, technically a reimagining of the original Star Fox series because Star Fox 2 was canceled uh, when they were in development, but then the N64 came out, so that's why they made Star Fox 64, a reimagining of the original Star Fox game. The far left, that's one area, and then how the branching system works. It's either how it's either how well you do on the, the missions and uh, special objectives, like for one area to get a mission complete leads to the easy path, and a mission accomplished leads to the difficult path. So you uh, you go to to the asteroid field on, on the bottom, like uh, towards the right. If you don't save Falco, or you don't go through the water arcs, but if you do go, th if you do complete both, and you complete the boss, that takes you to Sector Y. And uh, but let's just start with the easy path. Ask Asteroid Field. Uh, let's see. There's a warp. There's a warp gate uh, somewhere in that level that you go through, and you can uh, as soon as you follow, you, you take that path all the way up to Cat and uh, Planet Catna underneath that Sector Y. That's my like, mission accomplished. Uh, going through the whole level of the asteroid field leads to Kachina on the bottom, and then from Kachina uh, you go to mission complete, which is if you fail to deactivate the time bomb and fail to defeat Star Wars, which we'll get back to in a few minutes, but if you fail to complete the level, you go to Sector uh, X, and then if you if you defeat Star Wars and deactivate the bomb and play the chain, you go uh, to Solar. And uh, Sector X, once you're there, you can take a, a warp gate from in that level all the way to Sector Z, which leads to the hard path. But going forward, you go to Macbeth, which is mission accomplished if you defeat the spy board boss before Slippy gets a hold of him. And they get the Titania, which uh, farther on the on the right, I'll, I'll move in a little bit. And it's if you let Slippy get slapped to the planet by the spy board enemy. But uh, once you're on, and going back a little bit, let's see, uh, Katana, if you fail to, def uh, to defeat the enemies, you yeah, go to Pachina. And uh, if you do, if you do succeed, no, I'm sorry, Sector X. And uh, if you, but if you succeed in defeating the enemies, you are Solar, which is the sun in the middle. And uh, for Sector Y, if you defeat over 100 enemies, you go to Aquas. If you defeat less, you go to Cadena. And Aquas, you progress through level to get to Zonas, which is above Solar. 
And in Zonus, if you get caught by searchlights, you go to Macbeth. But if you if you pass level without getting spotted by searchlights, you go to Sector Z. And Sector Z, once you're on Sector Z, if you let a missile hit the Great Fox, uh, you, you, go, you go to Macbeth. No, you, you go to you go to Bulls, I'm sorry. It's been a long time since I brushed up on it. But if you if you defeat all the enemies, the missiles before it hits the Great Fox, you go to Area Six. And uh, hold on a sec. Okay, in the hard path, once you get to Area Six, you complete it to uh, to reach Venom through the hard path. And uh, with the easy path. Uh, if you're in Titani, you progress through it to get the Bulls, which is the state, uh, the defense station right uh, below Venom, and right adjacent next to Venom, but underneath it. And you complete Bulls to get to, to, the, to the easy path of Venom. And I'll get back to the endings in a second, but um, back to the middle path. And if you fail to defeat uh, the Macbeth boss, uh, in time, you go to Bulls, but if you defeat it, if you switch the tracks and let it run into the fuel station, it runs to Area 6, and, uh, that, that, that's how, that's how, uh, paths branch out. But once you're on Venom, if you came from Area 6, you fight Star Wolf and their advanced ships, and then you go, after that, you go and fight Andros in the depths of Venom. But this, this leads to a good ending, where... You have to fight Andross' brain, and, and, and unlike the easy path, where in the easy path you, you go through swarms of enemies and you go through a, a, a Golnick boss to get to Andross, but when you confront Andross, uh, he turns out to be a robot once you hurt, hurt him more and, and, and uh, you defeat him and then game's over, but it's more rewarding for the good ending, which is the hard path, because once Fox, he finishes off against Andros, he defeats the bra the brain of Andros, and once he's de once that's the once that's destroyed, Andro Andros tries to take Fox with him and until his father James McCloud comes in to save him and escorts him out of the planet, and that and that and that's the that's the better end of, that's most likely the canonical ending. So uh, a lot of people would say that's that that's the real ending because it's more rewarding and a lot of stuff happens in that ending compared to the bad ending from the easy path. So that's the quick, that's a, a more elaborate, but quick, try to make a quick walkthrough on the whole uh, Star Fox 64 gameplay. Star Fox 64 is one of the finest shooters to ever come along. Nintendo's Animali and Space Shooter is rare in this fantastic looking, wonderfully produced title. And yet another symbol of Nintendo's persistence to create sequels to its 16-bit games, Star Fox 64 takes the never say die shooter genre to new levels of complexity, sleek design, and gameplay control. Star Fox 64 represents the next leap in the evolution of Nintendo games with full speech card samples FMV's animation and fantastic production value, a, tr a challenging branch system, and multiplayer gaming all in one cartridge. Staggered throughout the game is the full use of motion and video animation, eloquent cinematic sequences that wrap the gameplay up in rich storyline, setting each mission with the right mood. Boasting a remarkable amount of voice sampling for a card game, each team member's former portables are turned into live voice samples. And while not a CD-ROM killer, Star Fox 64, like Super Mario 64 before, demonstrates to second and third party developers what can be achieved on a single cartridge. It is an 8 megabyte cartridge containing almost 3 megabytes of straight sound and each of the 23 characters has, as it were, something to say. An exceptional shooter that's only improved since its original 16-bit inception, Star Fox 64 is deep with gameplay strategy and calculated level progression mechanics. Much like Star Fox on Super NES, Slippy the Frog, Peppy the Rabbit, and Falco the Falcon join Fox McCloud as they fly through space in their pads and their R-Wing fighters in forward scrolling mode fashion. Players will also pilot a rather clunky submarine and a unique tank with hovering capabilities depending on the various mission they encounter. 
But what differentiates Star Fox 64 from its past version is that gamers will play in both forward scrolling levels. Found in later day shooters like Sega's Saturn and Panzer Dragoon, while never while newer missions enable full 3D movement, usually couched in a closed spherical environment. In each, the R wings are capable of relatively quick acceleration, quick hard braking, emboldments, loops, barrel rolls, and a wonderful control system that's as responsive and as smooth as silk. As many as 15 interconnected levels are playable in the single player mode, with each each with the most amazing looking bosses seen in a long time. Ranging from a humongous clam in aquas to a lavish molten lava monster in solar to an amazingly animated monkey head and hands and an easy ending. These bosses are fantastic in design and graphic ex execution. A clever set of paths are open when players kill a specific a specified amount of enemies, follow an unusual path, shoot several objects and enemies, fly through space, special constructs, or beat certain bosses. The four-player split-screen action deepens the game's overall value with choosable variations like team play or all-out death matches, and it's a blast. Plus, after meeting certain requirements, you can play on foot with laser cannons on your shoulders. For beginners, a practice model mode is also available in one-player mode. And let's not forget that the Rumble Pack, bundled with the game, adds an unusual burst of arcade ecstasy to the game. There are a few disappointments, however, and these start with the gameplay. The gameplay nods to Wing Commander and cinematic references to a few recent sci-fi moves. The play is great, but not terribly innovative, nor altogether new. And with a few exceptions, it's just a good update from the original Star Fox. Second, this game, like all shooters by their very nature, is extremely repetitive. Almost all of the little details have been sorted out throughout the game, except the incredibly muddled and dark submarine level, which is Aquas. The music could have also been improved as well and may have suffered due to the abundant sound samples. That's the final planet, Venom, where the final battle takes place in the game. And you see Star Wolf, that's the team that Andros hired to come after Star Fox. They were supposed to be in Star Fox 2, but unfortunately that game got cancelled. So they, they were put in this game in the reimagining of the original Star Fox. And they each come after Star Fox team member. Like Leon the Lizard comes after Falco, Andrew, the uh, Andrew Winkany comes after Slippy and Peppy comes after and he fights with Pigma because they were both teammates of the uh, former teammates of the original St Star Fox and Wolf O'Donnell, the leader of Star Wolf comes after Fox and the Cloud because they're the leaders of their own respective squadrons and you see that so that's Andros who's the final boss and he's the villain of the most of the, mostly in the Star Fox series, but in the game he's the final boss. He was the one who was banished to Venom uh, by General Pepper. And uh, on, on General Pepper's behalf, Star Fox, they, they come to halt Andros' plans. And, they, and Fox, who fights against Andros, but avenge his father's death. And you see the brain exposed. That means that Fox, he defeated Andros' uh, head and hands, and... Now it's the fight that rain. As you see, it was more significant with the 3DS because the graphics were improved and the same the gameplay was more smooth than the N64 version. As you can see, back in 2011 when the, the remake came out, uh, it was more like uh, going back to the old days, like the nostalgia was alive and well. But anyhow, that being said, uh, it is the kind of game you will spend many sleepless nights with, especially for hardcore Star Fox games, even after you finish. The replay value will bring you back again and again. Nintendo 64 owners who have been waiting to embark on their next great gaming adventure should run out immediately and buy Star Fox 64. Which, uh, which is where the graphics, the sound, and the gameplay all combine to create an 
and Instinct's N64 classic. And uh, I, I wanted to buy a Star Fox 64 game. I uh, never, never bought it when the 64 was alive, and I should have bought it on 3DS, but I never thought of it. But maybe down the road I will consider getting it. I checked out both versions. Uh, the difference is that one t you, the, the Nintendo 64 version will let you save, but the 3DS lets you save and lets you replay the levels. So, uh, it would be best to get the 3DS or whatever version you want to get. Um, it's, yeah, it's still a very good on the list. And uh, that's it for today. Uh, if you want, uh, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy watching this video. Again, my name is Stephen Mac 25 and uh, thank you so much for watching. Check, uh, check the sources in the description if you want to know where I got the sources. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Take care.